Good evening and welcome to Mid Valley Bible Church's 53rd virtual prayer meeting. My name is Doug Hornock and I'm the pastor at Mid Valley. There are, in my opinion, two profound reasons why people struggle to embrace the Christian faith or find it difficult to remain devoted to God. The first reason is unexplained, unjustified, seemingly undeserved suffering that we see in our world. We could all fairly well endure and even accept suffering that we know we deserve. We made a choice, the wrong choice. We took a risk. Things did not work out as we had hoped. And because of it, we're going through a hard and difficult time. And we can accept those difficulties. Now, that doesn't make the discomfort less painful, but it does provide us with the strength to preserve and not quit or throw in the towel. But when suffering comes without warning or cause and has a way of lingering long past what seems fair, people start to question God's goodness. What's more, some may even begin to question whether he even exists. Now, the second reason why some justify their abandonment of Christianity is the issue of unanswered prayer. They've bombarded heaven with what they believe are legitimate requests for legitimate concerns. They've persisted in asking with both humility and confidence that God is both good and able to help. And when the answers simply don't come, when it seems that the gates of heaven are silent, some people decide to quit. They have a hard time wrapping their minds around the existence of an all-powerful, all-loving God who seems to be not listening to legitimate prayers or seems powerless to act. And I'm sure that there are other reasons that people would give for their decision to abandon or never even consider the Christian faith, but those two have got to be at the top. But there's another reason why people struggle and sometimes become confused over their commitment to God. And that's because the answer that God gives them concerning their prayers. And by that, I'm talking about those occasions when the answers to our prayers turn out to be more difficult to embrace than not hearing anything at all. Now that truth is illustrated by a 7th century B.C book and prophet named Habakkuk. Let me briefly tell, tell you about him. Habakkuk lived in the late 7th and early 6th century BC when the southern kingdom of Judah was immersed in idolatry and immorality of every conceivable sort. Manasseh was their king and he turned out to be the most wicked and depraved king that Judah had ever seen. Eventually, he repented of his evil ways, which is a beautiful reminder that it's never too late to turn back to God, no matter how depraved or disastrous a life may be. God always stands ready to forgive. But Manasseh's late-in-life repentance was not sufficient to undo the damage he had inflicted on the nation. And so the judgment of God was inevitable. And it took the form of 70 years in captivity in Babylon. And I think Habakkuk would have fully agreed that such judgment was warranted. He knew how bad it had become in, in Judah. And God had to do something. In fact, Habakkuk had pleaded with God over and over again to intervene and to do something about the pervasive wickedness in the land. It was a wickedness likely far worse than anything we have witnessed today in 2020. And Habakkuk struggled for a time wondering if God would ever answer his prayer to do something about the deplorable conditions in Judah. He struggled with what he feared might be unanswered prayer. But the greatest struggle he endured was when the answer finally came. 
and turned out to be indescribably unbelievable. As God says, he's going to use the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, to judge and punish Judah. And Habakkuk can't believe it. God's answer seems so inconceivable with his character and his ways that he's absolutely speechless. Now, here's the takeaway. Perhaps you've experienced this as well. You've asked God repeatedly to step into your circumstances and put things right. But when he finally does, it's not at all what you expected. It was an answer to prayer, to be sure, but not the sort of answer you would have ever expected. And I want to talk more about this next week. But the application of this truth is clear. We are praying and we are pleading for God to work in the upcoming election that good and godly men and women would be put in positions of leadership. People who uphold and defend morality, the sanctity of human life and traditional marriages, and embrace the proper role and function of men and women who understand government's function as well as its limitation. We're asking that Peace and tranquility would be restored to our nation. And in a few weeks, we're going to know how God is answering our prayers. But until then, we cannot and we must not quit. We can't grow weary or discouraged. God is still in control. What's more I don't believe for one moment that things in this country are so far gone as they were in Habakkuk's day that you and I should stop fighting, stop witnessing, stop persevering, and stop praying. And so tonight we're going to give you some specific things to pray for in regards to our nation. And I want to encourage you not only to pray for these tonight, but also in the coming days. And so with that in mind, let's now go to prayer.
Thank you.